auxiliary patrol vessel from which the first Jap midget sub entering Sydney Harbour was sighted. Her well-known owner and skipper was at the helm, supported by a volunteer crew of yachtsmen who have devoted themselves to harbour and coastal patrol work since early in the war. Warning signals flashed and the Navy went to work. Channel boats, depth-charged laden, swept into action. The crew of this craft located the first jet and sent 300 pounds of high explosive down to greet her. The welcome was not appreciated. This rating, who must be nameless, got the submarine. Hoisted from the ooze of the harbour floor, the subs have their secrets explored by Navy experts. Midget men are acquired for midget subs. The passage aft between banks of batteries would present grave difficulties for allied Hermann Goring, for instance. The electric motor, driven from storage batteries, her sole source of motive power. Switchboard is a model of compactness. Internal end of torpedo tubes. Firing mechanism, simple movement sends the projectile on its way. That torpedo went ashore, miraculously failed to explode, and another unsung hero took his life in his hands to extract the firing pistol. The torpedo motor's ingenious mechanism driven by compressed air. A Japanese secret, gyroscopic rudder control which makes it possible for the torpedo to alter course after it has left the submarine. When the gyro reaches speed, it throws over a trip, operating rudder controls. This is what happens. At right, the target, a ship. At left, the sub. If an island, for instance, should intervene, preventing a direct shot, the sub fires ahead and the gyro does the rest. Not such amateurs, these Japanese. The subs are now at Benelong Point, Sydney, for public exhibition in aid of naval charities. Yes, the silent service is in the show business, but for a mighty good reason.